Guys, welcome to Flipping and Punching. And today we're gonna pull some orders and I got a question from a viewer about auction houses. About taking stuff to a local auction house, the process, so we're gonna discuss that. Um, we sold, we didn't have a lot of sales this weekend. We sold, I think, 10 items, but there were some big sales. So thankfully they were big sales or it would've been a really bad week. But um, we sold 10 items for, I think, $1,500, so. Uh, let's pull some orders to jump into this. So the first thing we sold was a Tampa Bay Rays alligator stuffed animal. I think I like a buck into this. I think we sold this for $7.99 plus shipping. So let's pull it down to A1. There it is. Got this at a garage sale. I think I paid like a buck for it. I like to put my stuffed animals though in a in a bag. As you see, this bag's too small for this one, but um, it really helps keep them from getting damaged. Especially when I'm adding a bunch of items to these to these totes i want to make sure that these stuff animals are protected and they don't get any like dust or stains on them you know some of these other items could you know may have dirt or something on that i didn't realize so when i do it i like to put it in a little baggie when i put them in there so if i do throw stuff on top i don't have to worry about getting damaged especially like white hats white plush stuff along those lines but uh we got 7.99 plus shipping for these i love selling plush they're super easy to ship you just throw in a poly bag and send it on your way we actually got some really cool poly bags, by the way. These daisy ones right here. So I also got these giant thank you bags. G uh, Giaro Pack actually sponsored my last picking video. And they are offering all of my viewers a 10% discount. I'll put a link down below there. But they're super fast. They're really cool because they actually add... Instead of using like the the boring gray poly bags, they actually add like color and stuff like that to them, like daisies, other stuff. So it makes you really stand out. The whole purpose about being an independent business owner, you want to stand out from your competition. So every little thing like this does go the extra mile, especially if it doesn't cost you any extra money. So they give you 10%. I'll put a link down in the description down below. So check them out, guys. Use code Picking and Punching to get a discount. The next item that we sold, and I don't know why I even had this in my store. I sold, I think, a Halo Blu-ray for... $1.99. Why do I have items listed like that? I don't even know. I think it was up maybe five, six bucks originally, and then it just got discounted and discounted because it wasn't selling. So I'm glad to move it out of the store, but really it's a waste of my time to sell anything on eBay for $1.99. Just to let you guys know. Halo Red vs. Blue. Oh, it was sealed. That's why I had it listed there. The fact that this sold for $11.99. I'm sorry, $1.99. Yeah, I don't know. I changed my complete business model. I'm not listing anything in my store under for $199, $299, $399. So anytime you guys see that stuff sell, that stuff I may have in my, my store for like a year or so. At one point in time, I just start discounting things. I rather take a loss on an item. The work's already done, so why take it off eBay or donate it? If it's not taking a lot of room like a DVD, I'll just keep it up there. And if when it sells, it sells. Make a little bit of my money back and but I am wasting some time. So I gotta really kind of figure out if that's really worth it. But you know, the fact that I have to go through these totes and pull those items out, they'll be also a waste of time. So I'd rather get paid for my waste of time. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys, do you guys donate your items or do you guys actually, you know, just discount things to itself and rather take a loss on the item and get back some of your money or do you rather just move it on and get it out of there? So I guess it really depends on the size of them too, but I don't know, curious to, Hear what you guys have to say on that. All right, so the next item we sold was over here in A9. I already pulled it here. It was a beer tap. I've had this in my store probably like a year. Right here. As you can see, Pyramid Apricot Ale. I don't know what it is, but I have a thing for beer taps. I think they're super cool. If I see them at, if I see them at your garage sales, I'll pick them up. Unfortunately, a lot of times beer taps don't do that well. They do sit in your store for a while, but I will pick them up every time because I just really enjoy them. I like to drink craft beer, you know, when I go out and uh, when I find craft beer, taps can sell well. Um, sometimes these special taps can sell well, but a lot of like the generic one-off taps don't do that well. And I just realized I said well like four times in like the last two minutes. So, but we got, I sent out a best offer on that one. We got $6.99 plus shipping. Um, I bought that in a giant lot. I've already made all my money back on that, so. Just happy to have it move. So I did get a question in the comments about the process of going to an auction house. I also take things to my local auction house to clear items out. So they kind of want to know the whole process here. So we'll walk through the process, tell you guys a little bit more how that works as we pull orders. But the biggest thing is if you have a local auction house in your area 
I would go there first to check out, see what the items are selling at. Because every market is going to be different. Some items, you know, like the one I go to, they have a um, toy sell really well because they're a local guy who has a toy shop, comes there and pretty much battles everyone for the toys. So toys do well there. You know, certain other, uh, certain other items do well there. So what you would have to do is you contact your local auction house. Usually you have to send them photos of what you have and you talk to them on the phone. And their commission can range anywhere from like 20 to 40 percent for, you know, based on what the items are. Um, I made a deal with my local auction house. We do a flat 25 percent across the board. You know, all I have to do is take my items there and drop them off. So uh, we'll talk more about it here, but let's pull the next order. So next thing we sold is everyone's favorite. Uh, which thinks it's hilarious I bought all these comms at the flea market, but they keep selling. Okay, we sold two boxes of these beer skin. I need to get this list on eBay, by the way. This is super cool. Got this at a horror movie convention um, many, many years ago. I got an autograph. I met the Crypt Keeper. And I have been sitting here and not listing it. I need to get this on eBay right now uh, over the next day or two because this item is super cool. But also, too, it's Halloween time. It's October. So October items do sell for a premium. Bear skin lubricated. I think this is 10. I think this is another one bear skin. Yep, so we sold these two. Um, I got about a buck into each. I bought I bought 38 boxes for 45 bucks. So a little over a dollar in each of these. This one cost me about four bucks a ship. So I sold these for $16.99 with free shipping. So I make about four bucks per box. Um, so quick flip, easy to ship, throw them in a poly bag and send them off. So I actually sold a pair of cowboy boots, vintage cowboy boots. Now I actually picked these up when I went sourcing down with uh, ADH Dave over at his side of the state. He lives on the west coast of Florida. I live on the east coast of Florida. And um, I paid 25 bucks for those boots and I ended up selling them for $174.99 plus shipping. I'll put a picture up here on the screen so you guys can see what I'm referring to here. I don't have them here, they're in my warehouse. I need to go pick them up to get them shipped out here. Also, too, we didn't have shipping on Monday because of the holiday. So I actually, the last video, I said I sold a Mickey Mantle bat. So I actually had that here. I'll show you guys that bat I sold. Pull the next item. We sold, we sold a couple books here. Um, one was a strategy guide. I think it's called Shell Shock. I also sold some vintage Care, Care Bear books. All right, so let's pull these Care Bear books. Where are they? Are they down here? No. Hmm. Ah, uh, let's see here. Here they are. So this giant lot of Care Bear books, we got, I think we got $19.99 plus shipping. Uh, I had a buck in each book here, so not much profits on this one. I actually thought these were gonna sell a lot better than what they did. Unfortunately, you know, they sat there for a while. I'm just glad to move them because they're a giant lot, but um, still made a little profit on them, but we sold them for $19.99 plus shipping. Now, <clears throat> All right, so the process of the auction house, let's go back to this. Once you send the pictures, they, they end up calling you up, let you know that you can bring the items up. You usually have to drop it off a week or two in advance of the auction. Drop off the, when you drop off the items there, it doesn't guarantee they're gonna go in that week's auction. It may take a week or two before they actually go in the auction. And you know, the fun thing is though, you can go up, go up there and watch it. So I dropped mine off two weeks ago. What ended up happening was they actually did not put it in the next week's auction. My dad was in town. We were going up to go see it. Unfortunately, they weren't in that auction. They were in the previous, they were in the, the following week's auction. So it's a two week process. They start everything usually off at 10 bucks at the auction. Sometimes they'll go down to five bucks. And when you take stuff up there, I mean, you know, you have to understand that some things are gonna sell less than what you want. You're gonna lose money. Some items are gonna break even and some items are gonna make money. You can work off the rule of averages. Your ultimate goal is to make more money than money invest in these items and to move some merchandise. So I just use it as a way to move merchandise to clear out space because we all go through this. As resellers, we buy a lot of items and then we buy those items. We end up not wanting to list them or wanna ship those items. Or we just get an overabundance of items and the items that, we, that were important to us three, four months ago are gonna be less important to us, you know, down the line. And that happens, it happens to all of us. So you guys have to have a way to try to move your merchandise. As you can see, my giant wall of crap has grown. I ended up clearing out one of the spare rooms of my house. So that stuff went into my, in my storage here in my garage. So 
as I told you guys, I'm trying to move this stuff out of my garage. And unfortunately, it's adding more stuff to the garage. But I did free up an extra room in my house, which is good. So my dad came down, he had a spare room. My mom's come to visit, so she'll have the spare room. So now the next step is to start clearing this out. So I'll be taking more stuff to the auction. So we'll do more of this in the future. I sold a strategy guide shell shock 67. I sold this for $9.99. I ended up buying like 30 something strategy guys at the flea market um, recently when I went there with Dave and Paul, Philly Flipper and ADH Dave. And I think I had about less than two, I had like a buck 70 each strategy guide. I got 9.99 plus shipping. I listed all the strategy guides at 10 bucks or more. So they're gonna be slower sellers, but I do really good with video game strategy guides. So I always pick them up if I get it for like a buck or two. I finally found it and it was, as always, the second to last item on the entire bookshelf I went through. Go figure, right? Last shelf, second last item. But we got $9.99 plus shipping. Uh, video game strategy guys usually sell pretty well, so keep an eye out for them. If you get them for cheap, pick them up. What are you doing outside? This guy knows she's not supposed to be outside. Yeah, is that where you're crying? Hey. Hey, what are you doing outside? She's extremely vocal. Let me tell you, she's not supposed to be going outside. She sneaks out there sometimes. Don't yell. Not my fault you went outside. Hey. Good girl. She's not supposed to be going outside, but apparently she likes to sneak out sometimes when dogs go out there. And then when we shut the door, bring them in, she's out there crying. So, but let's go over some of these big sales we got. This is a Bose stereo system here um i've had this sitting in my in my storage for like two years never got around to set. i got it during the pandemic um a gentleman i my probably my greatest buy of all time was and i wasn't filming at that point in time but i did a massive video game buy i got called back a couple weeks later and i bought over 50 sealed video games brand new video games one of those would be the castlevania nes game which was my biggest sale of all time, which I sold for like nine grand um, a while back. But um, he had a bunch of electronics there. He's a fix stuff and he's a buy stuff and just keep it on a shelf. And I ended up getting like 10 or 12 different electronic items that were on his shelf for 50 bucks. So I made my money back already. This is pure profit this time. The only thing, the only bad thing about this one, it's pretty, not dirty, but pretty like a lot of marks on it and stuff. So I sold it at a discount. Keep an eye out for the, these bows. I think this is the is it the wave machine yeah wave cd machines um these usually in good condition can bring like 150 200 bucks we end up getting 119 for this um i put in a discount so it offers up because of the condition of it but still 119.99 plus shipping it's a pretty good sale all right so before i show you this big sale i have let's go over this auction house stuff um so after the auction ends you take your items there they bid on it and i will say it's kind of exciting but also kind of disappointing too, especially if your items aren't selling for what you think they should sell for. And, uh, but it's okay, you know what I mean? Like, I buy stuff, so I would say 90% of the time I make money on my items, 10% of the time I would either break even or lose money on items. So I, I work out the rule averages, if I can be right 90% of the time, then I'm gonna do really, really well in my business. And, uh, but hey, let's, let's go over this. Um, so what they do is after the auction ends, they actually, mail you a check within like 48 hours which is really cool so you get that check sent to you here all right so let's talk about my biggest sale of the week and it's the biggest sale i had in a, in a while to be honest with you. So i sold a comic book for i had a special edition comic book listed on sale on ebay for 999 dollars. i sent out a best offer for 8.99 and the buyer accepted and paid so this is a silver surfer number one um this is volume three so this actually came out in 1987 now, this got a 9.8. Now, the 9.8 is practically the highest, one of the highest grades you can get. 10.0s don't really exist. 9.9s don't really exist. So, 9.8 is considered pretty much the cream of the crop uh, with comic books, especially anything older or vintage. Um, newer stuff now, that stuff just comes out, you can get a 9.9, 10.0. Uh, they're still very rare to get those, but to have a 9.8 and something that's, you know, 35 years old is quite impressive. But what makes this book special, let me show you why they're sold for a premium. As you see, there's a regular book, right? Down this corner right here is what you call the newsstand. It has a UPC code on it. Comic books that were sold in a comic store do not have a UPC code on them. They have a little Marvel sign or DC sign in the bottom corner. 
So there's say there's 2,000 comic books shops out there. They're going to get an overabundance of, of books. There's not a lot of newsstands, especially, you know, as in the 80s and 90s, you had newsstands. But as it went through the 90s and early 2000s, newsstands started to just dis- disappear because we have the internet now, we have everything else. So the amount of newsstand books that got released are very limited. The fact that when you buy a book at a comic book store, it's going to be bagged and bored and is going to be put on a shelf very nicely and professionally. To have a book like this, if you buy a book at, think about this, this book sat on a rack, no bag, no board, and a newsstand. No one bought this book from a newsstand and then literally saved this book for you know 35 years and it still came back as 9.8. So newsstand grades are very hard to get in high grade. Fact that the, how they were handled at the newsstand, pushed around on the on the rack, not taken good care of, not bagged, not bored. So if you get a book in like the late 80s, early 90s, into 2000s, that is a high grade of the newsstand. It could actually bring a premium. Here's the crazy thing though. There's multiple newsstands listed on eBay right now. One's listed at like 400, one's listed at like 600. And someone bought mine for $899. And there's only one difference between my book and all those other ones. When I sent this book to CGC, I paid an extra five bucks to get this custom Silver Surfer logo put on the top of it. I don't normally do that with all my books because that gets real expensive, especially if you're sending massive lots of it. But when I did send this in, they were offering this custom label. This custom label is now retired, so you can't get this unless it's on a book that's already. Adding the factor of the custom label with the book in 9.8, I still wouldn't have paid an extra four or 500 bucks for this book, but someone did. And I'm extremely happy that they did. And uh, Hey, works out great for us. So that was eight. So we end up getting eight hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents plus shipping for this book. And these high end books, I ship all of them through UPS, not through the postal service. Um, I've had issues with postal service before with high end items. Make sure that anytime you sell anything over seven hundred fifty bucks, you have to. It's required by eBay to add signature confirmation. That helps secure your items. It also helps with insurance claims and it helps protect yourself. So getting back to the whole auction house, is it worth doing? I would say, yeah, it is worth doing. Especially if you had a bunch of merchandise you need to move, a bunch of merchandise that you're you're looking to just clear out, or if you're trying to move, you know, free up stuff, it's probably one of the best ways to not have the ship items, to be able to take it to the, um, take it to a local auction and you know it's gonna sell within a few days. So I also sold some pictures that I didn't wanna ship. The funny thing is yesterday I went with Dave, ADH Dave to, um the flea market and as we're at the flea market somebody walked by with a michael jackson picture frame that i actually sold at the local auction house so i had two of those i bought them for like two bucks at a, at a garage sale I didn't want to ship them took them to the auction they did not do well they sold for five bucks for both pictures the funny thing is some guy walked by with that same frame the only reason i knew it was the same one because it had a little uh, damage to it and he walked by and I was like, wait a minute, where'd you get that from? He said he bought it from a guy at the auction at the um, said he bought it from a guy at the flea market for five bucks. So some guy that came to the auction also said at the flea market. I just happened to be there and the guy walked by. So very, very small world. Let me show you guys this bat. All right, so here's the bat. Louisville Slugger. Genuine, and there's the Mickey Mantle name on it. The wooden bat. And it even has the initials Mickey Mantle number five on it. This is from the 1970s, but I actually sold this in our last video, but I didn't actually have it on me to show you guys, but pretty cool bat. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate all the support we get on this channel and also our Picking and Punching channel. Um, this channel is growing here, so I would love to get this channel to a thousand subs. So please share with your friends, let people know. Thank you very much. I do appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, guys, make sure you guys keep flipping and punching.